Unlike the law, which is codified or black letter, as it is often described, ethics are usually not specifically written down anywhere. However, just like the law, ethics is evolving and contested. Often a legal system is imbued with the ethics of the society it emerged from, and over time, ethical norms can be embodied in law. Similarly, ethical norms can be breached just as the law can. However, whereas a court decides whether an individual or corporation has breached the law, ethics usually plays out in the court of public opinion. This in itself says something about the nature of ethics. Ethical reasoning dates back almost as far as the written word itself. There are many classical works on ethics, including those of the ancient Greeks, and arguably foremost among these writers, Aristotle. And among the Romans, Cicero was perhaps known best. Grayson Cohen note that the term ethics owes its origin to ancient Greek, where the word ethikos referred to the authority of custom or tradition. When Cicero sought a similar word in Latin, he chose mos, from which in modern English the word moral is derived. Morals can be thought to differ from ethics insofar as morals are possessed by the individual and are embodied by them from moral teaching by those immediately around them. The ancients, like us today, realise that ethics are not clear-cut. Modern conceptions of ethics owe a lot to philosophers such as George Friedrich Hegel, an early 19th century philosopher who agreed that ethics were embedded in the past. That is to say that traditions and customs guide ways of behaving. However, morals are current and reflect the teaching of principles of how to comply with these traditions, but in a contemporary setting or context. Hegel saw morals as being the mechanism for ethics changing over time. This distinction is important in helping us to understand that while everyone may have different values or morals, the sum of this morality across a group of people, such as a firm, a profession, an industry or country, represents their ethical position. So while there is a distinction, when we speak of morals or ethics across a community, and particularly when we are tackling a moral or ethical issue, we are usually talking about the same thing at any given point in time. So what are ethical problems? Grace and Cohen set out the things that are actually being considered when we examine the moral dimensions of a problem. Considering something ethically requires that one go outside or beyond one's self-interest alone in reaching a decision. Moral opinions are therefore impartial. An ethical judgment is one that can be universalised. It is one that is perceived to apply to everyone in similar circumstances and not only to oneself. Ethical opinions must be able to be defended with reasons. This requirement distinguishes ethical opinions from biases or mere preferences. Ethical opinions are not subject to a vote in a way that political opinions and decisions are. A moral opinion is not just whatever a majority decides it is, that is to say that something does not become moral because it has popular support, but rather it is already moral before a vote is actually taken. Moral or ethical opinions are centrally action-guiding. They are not only theoretical or academic, but determine what behaviour or actions are appropriate. In this sense, inappropriate actions, or those that contravene ethics, will be perceived negatively. As a leader, you will be required to address ethical issues, both personally and professionally. There are two reasons why acting ethically is important. The first is self-interested, insofar as the modern business environment is becoming increasingly more regulated and transparent. Acting unethically is more likely to be uncovered and communicated to your detriment and that of your organisation. The second is others-focused and aligned to transformational leadership models, where a moral or ethical leader is more likely to produce positive outcomes for followers and the organisations they lead within. The second reason is also important since an understanding of these theories of leadership, coupled with an understanding of ethics and a strong positive value system, can provide the foundation for moral reasoning in different situations. Grace and Cohen refer to the idea of reflective equilibrium, whereby a balance between personal positive values and an understanding of general ethical foundations allows an individual to navigate moral reasoning. For example, personal values might produce a reaction to a new situation which has arisen as being potentially unethical or immoral. Once a situation is recognised, they then fall back upon accepted principles of effective leadership, such as the tell the truth, explain consequences, advance the welfare of followers, empower individuals and listen attentively to others in order to apply those principles to the situation 
and ask what actions are most aligned to those principles for the most people. They might then compare this result to their values and ask if they are morally comfortable with the outcome. If they are not, they would identify why not and go through another iteration of checking against principles and perhaps weighting them differently until they are satisfied with the answer. Grace and Cohen note that moral reasoning is a matter of bringing into harmony or consistency various particular judgments with each other and with the principles we hold. In this respect, moral reasoning works in both directions in order to achieve consistency among one's particular judgments relative to each other and among the various principles to which one personally subscribes relative to each other. A critical outcome of this process is the relative weighting of personal values and ethical structures relative to the specific problem, which may require a no-win choice between a decision that keeps a promise to one person while at the very same time breaking one to another. The reason we can come to an informed, if not necessarily comfortable, decision is that the process of moral reasoning allows for the modification and revision of the principles to which one subscribes as well as of the particular judgments one makes.